So what is what is Flip the Fair? So Flip the Fair is a flipped science fair. And the idea is we have graduate students from Virginia Tech who are making trifold poster boards uh, that display their research. And instead of it being adults judging little kids and students, we're going to have the adults, the grad students, being judged by elementary school students. kids trickle in. Um, there's going to be some volunteers who are going to be escorting them around. They will have their own clipboards. They're going to be judging you. Um, just know that they have full range in judging you from one to five and they can use fractions and decimal points and everything <laughs> in between. Um, they may have questions for you. They may not. Um, but, but remember what uh, was discussed in the workshop. Um, have fun. Uh, enjoy talking about your science. Back in fall semester last year, I sat down with Carla and we started chatting about, you know, potential outreach events that we could do. We originally came up with the idea uh, last semester and then we applied to a, a grant that we got. And so she, you know, just sent out an email to all of the um, STEM graduate students and just sort of said, hey, I'm thinking of applying for this grant anyone interested, you know, we can come together and form a project. And ultimately we decided to do a flipped science fair because it would be a great outreach opportunity, both connecting uh, students to the community, but also giving grad students an opportunity to practice their science communication skills. And there's a lot of outreach that happens directly in the bubble surrounding universities across the country. And we wanted to get out of that bubble. Uh, and we, we said, well, where can we go? Should we try a school? Should we try the Science Museum? And I suggested the libraries. We're here at the Melrose Branch Library in uh, Roanoke, Virginia. It's part of the Roanoke City Public Libraries. And this branch we specifically uh, designed to be more science themed. The library's shifted a lot. Just in general, across the nation, we've shifted a lot from just being those books on the shelves to being a true community center. Here in Roanoke, we really focus on serving the needs of the families that live in Roanoke. We have many features here at the library that are specific to helping children and teens have a, have a nice place to be. We have a dedicated children's area, we have a dedicated science lab, we have a dedicated outdoor space for outdoor science experiments. We partner with a lot of organizations here in the city like the Department of Social Services. We bring in everything here so it really is that community center. The libraries have been absolutely fundamental to de the development of this project. Um, providing resources and support and connections to integrate with the community. I think this project would not be what it is without that. As we were developing that, you know, we thought, okay, what, what else can we add that would be helpful um, for the graduate students especially, because some of them may have never had an opportunity to um, speak and interact with elementary school children before. So to help the graduate students condense their message into a science fair poster, we had uh, a workshop from the Center for Communicating Science on science communication. We had a diversity, equity, and inclusion talk um, and some poster brainstorming time. So th the project has two goals. The first is to provide science communication training for graduate students at Virginia Tech in the hopes of helping them connect their research with a broader public. The second goal is to provide meaningful identity building outreach for elementary school students in Roanoke by having them be the judges of the science fair. And I think it's important, especially in this day and age, for younger students who are thinking about a career in science uh, to see themselves as scientists, to, so to bring a diverse array of scientists that they can see and be like, wow, like, she's cool, like, she looks like me, I can be a scientist.
oh, I think the elementary school student interviews are gonna be so, so awesome. Sometimes so they're... honest. Knock, knock. Knock, wait, what? Knock, knock? Yeah. No, okay, who's there? Interrupting cow. Interrupting cow. Mm. Interrupting cow joke. Are you having a fun time at the fair? Yeah. Uh, what's your favorite thing about it so far? I get to do stuff and meet more people and I get to learn about science and how people do their jobs. Uh, do you think you can be a scientist if you want to be? Yes. An astronaut as a type of scientist. Why do you want to be an astronaut? Because that's the only thing that's cooler than any other job. Do you want to be a scientist when you grow up? Yes. What kind of, what do you want to study? Uh, colors. Colors? What do you like about colors? Uh, because they, they make pink, they make pink, red, orange, green, blue, purple, violet. What's been your favorite food so far here? Um, probably, uh, well, one of them is, um, where, uh, you learn about, like, reptiles and, uh, Snakes like lizards. Me and him are based, we're doctors, and we will show us, we're gonna go show you our job, what we do, so let's go. So he's basically telling, he's basically looking at the screen while I sit down in my chair. He looks on the screen to tell me if I'm doing a bad job while I look in the body. <laughs> It's important that graduate students build a science communication identity, so start to see themselves as people who are capable of communicating science and people who enjoy communicating science. You can do this all, all this amazing work, but if you can't bring it to the public and tell people about it, then, then what's the point? And I think a lot of uh, members in the public who don't really understand what research is, how it, how it happens, what you do, I think it can be misinterpreted. And I think that we, as scientists should do a really good job in being able to communicate that out. Did you guys accomplish everything you wanted to accomplish? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. I think cool. this is a pretty unique idea, like yeah. to look for engagement uh, through making them judges. <laughs> yeah. You have the say in the outcome of this person. Yeah. <laughs> it's great pra um, practice for like, the researchers as yeah. well to like be able to explain their research to people. Yeah. yeah. And then, I mean, all the kids I worked with had just so many their questions audience. to ask. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You always think about the scientific audience. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And now it's, can mm -hmm. I actually make this explainable to anybody? Mm -hmm. That's really no, important. That would make good I mean, some of the kids would ask like really specific science questions and then the judges would be so surprised yeah, that they even knew it. <laughs> Do you think it was a success today? It was amazing. It was better than I ever dared to hope. I heard lots of comments that made me think that our younger students are really being encouraged by the students that they were interacting with. Um, really think it gave them confidence that they too could study scientists or be anything they want. The kids had a good time. I was watching them. They, were, they took the job very seriously of, of judgment. And uh, it was just so good to see that the roles reversed there. It was just, it was phenomenal to walk around and see scientists engaging kids and kids asking all these questions. I think it was super inspiring um, just to see kids so hyped about science and about asking their own questions and being taken seriously as judges. A lot of the children that we bring into the libraries, they, they don't always know and understand that they have those opportunities. And um, I think this gave them the confidence. They saw a lot of young students from Virginia Tech that look like them, that talk like them, that were from the same area as they are. And I feel like that, that just, it probably really impacted their lives more than the Virginia Tech students know. So because of COVID and because this is the first time we're doing it, the libraries have been talking about it as a pilot project. And I think that is so exciting that this is gonna happen again next year and hopefully on an annual basis. I hope it inspires other people around the world to do similar events. Um, and and I, who am I to say that that's gonna happen, but I really hope it will. I almost feel emotional just reflecting on the day and, and 
how exciting it was to see this project that has been, you know, started as the seed of an initial dream that I had and talked about with Carla and grew so much in conversations with our whole team and in conversations with the library and then just flowered today. It was amazing.